Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. I hope you're having a great Saturday. Uh, I'm having a much better Saturday now that I know my audio is working correctly. Uh, my voice changer was on, so oh, I, I can, can make, make myself, myself sound like this. this. And uh, apparently it was just jammed on in the application. I don't know why. Must have been left that way, but happy Pi Day, everybody. Happy Pi Day. And what are we going to be talking about today? But raspberry pies and raspberry pies, raspberry pies use in amateur radio, which is going to be a lot of fun. I'm having a little uh, pale ale. It's a hopsy pale ale. It's fairly bland. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Hey, we got Nagoya, Japan in the house. Uh, let's see. Uh, somebody asked if I'm doing SSTV tonight. Well, we're, we're going to be installing and, and set, well, not installing, setting up the app for it. I learned so many new things about the Raspberry Pi. Every time I crack this thing open, I, I operate with the Raspberry Pi out in the field. And, uh, I, every time I crack it open and try a new app, it's always a learning experience. So hopefully, hopefully I can help you out because as much as the Raspberry Pi is cheap and effective it can be a little cumbersome, which we'll talk about as we get going on the stream. Anybody that having an issue right now with the stream, go ahead and reset. As I was kicking this off, I was saying, I hope everybody's planned for their uh, two weeks off if they're of the family type, uh, because that is what we're going to be getting ready for. I've got to figure out some days where I can stay home with the kids because, uh, man, my wife is can't leave her stuck at home all the time. All right. Hey, from Florida, we got somebody from Cyprus. I don't know if that's Cyprus, the country. I hope so. I hope that's what that means. Elton Lowe from New York, from Ozland, Denmark, right on. Hello from Indiana. Very good. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, so we've got just a one little news story just to remind people, but I really don't know how serious it's going to be because we don't know how things are going to shake down with the, uh, the, the thing that we can't talk about on YouTube, otherwise our videos get demonetized, but... Um, if they end up canceling or postponing Hamvention, then things will obviously change with regards to the meetup. But as of right now, we are meeting up at the Troll, the Troll Pub. Where is the tour button? The Troll Pub. Get out of here with this. Let's see. The Troll Pub is where we will meet, and they have a room in the back for us. We will meet there 6 to 7 p.m. Stop it. God, this website. Who did this? Who did this to you, website? Take a 360 tour. I can't. Oh, okay. Coming soon. Very good. Okay. Maybe don't put the link on there if you're not going to have the, uh, the ability to do it. So Troll Pub, that's where we're going to go uh, if we're still on. But I don't know, guys. I got a feeling that um, Hamvention is going to be postponed this year. That's just my opinion, not based on anything. But it, if you just read the tea leaves, which they're just coated thick around your tea tea your teacup, uh, then you can get the idea that it's probably going to be. That's just my thought. Six to seven. I told them all night. Right on. Uh, no, sorry. I'm saying we will get there between six and seven, and then we're going to stay very late. So, <laughs> Michael, thank you, Michael, for, for working that out. Uh, didn't mean to give you a heart attack. No, 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 no. Um, we'll get there around six or seven, and then we're going to stay for a real long time. <laughs> He's going to pass out. I apologize. Okay. Whew. What are we going to talk about? Well, let's get started. We'll get right into it because this is going to hopefully not take us long, but, you know, you got to be prepared for the craziness of what can happen with the Raspberry Pi. So first off, I want to just throw this over to let you know, remind you, I do have a video that I did. I have walked through quite a few Raspberry Pi things before and in the past. I've talked about how to uh, do the image for Raspberry Pi, to flash it to a memory card, and then to do what you need to do to get it to run headless, which is basically running without a monitor or a keyboard attached using something like VNC. VNC is what I'm going to be using tonight to show you what's on the screen, and it's basically like a virtualization or a remote desktop software that you run. You can run it on an iPad, uh, an Android tablet, a phone, and in my case, I'm going to be running it on my computer. So you can think about this. I can put a little Raspberry Pi anywhere pretty much as long as it's connected to the radio, and I can have radio connection for relatively cheaply. By the way, all the things we're going to talk about as far as hardware, 
There'll be a link in the description to it. It's already there, but I just wanted to throw that out. So what are we talking about other than that physically? So here are the two Raspberry Pis, two, my two Raspberry Pi 4s. I've got a 3, and I've got a bunch of Nanos, which are the little small ones that they use in uh, the Pi Star Zoom Spot configs. So those are both my cases that I, I happen to like for the Raspberry Pi. This guy is really nice and portable. Ooh, my lighting is funky today. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to have to fix it. And this is kind of my newer case. I've had this for only a couple of months now. The nice thing about this guy is the connections are all in the back. So it's all out of the back. And it has a nice fan system uh, that will keep the Raspberry Pi 4 cool because they run kind of hot. So right on. Um, let's see. All right. So let me go back to the web here. All right, so let's say you, you followed one of my other videos or you just have a Raspberry Pi that just had the image flash for Raspberry Pi Buster and you want to install all the amateur radio software as painlessly as you can. And, and all, I'm being subjective, most amateur radio software that you'd want to use. Well, a ham has made it incredibly easy for us to do it. KM4ACK. This guy is outstanding. Standing. I posted the link in the description. He made us a script. You just copy and paste the script into the terminal window on your Raspberry Pi, hit enter, stick around for a little while, come back to it as it's installing and, and answer some of the questions. And it will pretty much install everything. And he has videos out on to run through the installation process for his script. He is a beast, an absolute beast. Please go subscribe to him because he is absolutely amazing for doing this. So big shout out to KM4ACK. Uh, yeah, really, we wouldn't, I have, like I've said, I've made videos in the past where I've shown you how to go through the installation process for like one application, WSJTX, JSA Call. Hey, he's in the chat, right on, right on, man. You deserve it, dude, you deserve it. You definitely deserve it, so um absolutely great work can keep it up your videos are outstanding i saw your uh parks on the air no digital modes just work in the radio and you did a great job so that was cool um but yeah like we've done in the past we've set up jsa call we've done ws wsjtx in the past and you know it's a process and you got to take your time with it and there's things you got to learn just craziness this takes a lot of the guesswork out of it in, in fact mostly all of the guesswork the only thing you're left with is really interfacing the radio and making the software all work together. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, let's get her flipped over. So we're basically going into this as though we um, <clears throat> have loaded the image from KM4ACK. So it's a base image. I have done the setup for the software, which we're going to walk through. But I wanted to mention that up front so that you all understand that you're basically starting with a blank slate. And I really... I really appreciate that. So here we go. A uh, couple of shout out items for those that don't already have it. If you're on Windows, go download Windows 32 Disk Imager because after you get this all done, you're going to want to be able to copy that image and save it off. And what I mean is the image that runs on the micro SD card that you run in the Raspberry Pi. You can save it off, put it somewhere, and then you can reflash it to other SDs whenever you need to, to pop it back in. So once you get a really good configuration that you like, you copy it off using Win32 uh, Disk Imager, and then you're good to go for all the other times you want to run through it. So, okay, so here is my, like I said, I have been monkeying around with this a bit, but here is just a day's couple uh, hours worth of uh, SSTV that, that <laughs> this is running on the Raspberry Pi right now. We are VM'd into the Raspberry Pi. So let's get out of here for right now. A little bit of lag there. Okay, so here's my desktop. I did modify the, the, the background. That's the only thing I modified. But this is what comes out of uh, the base install for the KM4ACK script. And it's got that cool little panel on the right-hand side that I believe that's Conky that uh, he worked on. And the only thing I do is I add the CPU status bar right here on the upper right-hand corner. And to do that, this is all just starting things out so you guys know. Add or remove programs. And if you click the Add button, and you go down to CPU Usage Monitor and click Add. You can add it right to the bottom. And then you can move that up or down. Uh, so in this case, let's let's slide it all the way up here so we can get it. Whoop, that's too far. There we go. And I put a spacer in between so that um, 
where did that spacer go? Do we need the spacer? Where's that spacer? Spacer, spacer. Now nah, we're good. Okay. So there you go. So basically, when you have a full screen app up, it will basically give you an ability to look at the CPU monitor without having um, without having it to look up back at the conky screen for this cool, really overlay display, but anything. Let's see. Let me pop the chat out so I can see the questions as they come in. We'll, we'll likely do calls unless we run long. So... Now, a little forewarning, the script, when you run it, takes a while. It takes about four hours, depending on if you have a Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 4. So once you run his, his script, which, again, is linked in the description to his video, you're going to use a standard installation of Raspberry Pi. You get it up and running. You're going to run the script, and then you're going to basically see this screen. It'll have a temple on it otherwise on the base load. Okay, so then the first thing you do after that point, so let's say we want to play radio. I'm using a 7300, so my life is a little bit easier. I'm going to plug right into the USB in the back of the Raspberry Pi, which I have already done. If you have a different radio where you require something like a signal link plus a separate cat cable, go ahead and make those connections. And then we're going to go into the Raspberry menu, and we'll go down to the first stop, which is going to be FL Rig. FL Rig is going to, oop, there we go. That's my radio kicking off. So it's not going to start out necessarily like this. This is obviously already set up. But you're going to go into File, I'm sorry, Config, Setup, Transceiver. Now, these are going to be settings for my radio, but I'm going to show you what they look like really quickly. If you have a 7300, the work's already done for you. You can just screenshot this, this moment right here, uh, right where my mouse is. And you can duplicate this, and this will work for you. So the key things to keep in mind here are that you need to pick your radio from the drop-down list. The IC7300 is on that list. Most radios are. 7600, yeah, there's the 7600. Somebody asked if the 7600 in there. It is in there, so you're good to go. You're going to want to pick your, um, your USB connection, whatever it is for cat control. Now, do the connection before starting the FL rig software because it will then show up. Although I, you can click this update button. I have had less success with that. The thing to keep in mind is that it is most likely going to be a dev TTY USB and then a number. And if there's only one port, it's going to be zero pretty much, particularly if it's a USB cat control. So you'll go ahead and hit that and then click in it, which will connect your radio. Keep in mind that all of these settings down here, the, the one and the echo and the PTT via cat, those are all going to be specific to your radio type, your radio brand. You can Google... You can Google these settings uh, for almost any radio, and there will be a post that someone has made on a forum at some point. Um, I have the retries set to just stock settings, and I have this other stuff on. So next thing is going to be polling. So for polling, I just go with default. So set all to 1 on meters. The operating controls set all to 1. Additional controls set all to 4. And that seems to work okay. And if you've done it correctly, you'll start to get all these controls that now are on the screen. So if I actually go in here, and let me let me flip this over so you can see. So if I go over and I and I turn my dial on my VFO, you can see that FL Rig is live updating. So you know it's working. Hey, it's working. So the next stop, since we have FL Rig open, why don't we go ahead and do FL Digi? So FL Digi, go back to Internet, and there is FL Digi. The nice thing is if this doesn't go full screen, which I think it's going to go full screen. Yeah, it does. So you can still see the CPU usage up in the top. That's why I just leave that there. All right. So again, I go into configure on the top. Go down to config dialog. You will be greeted with a um, kind of a, an automated attempt to set up FL Digi the first time you run it. You can follow that. That's fine. Uh, I've had good success in the past, and I've had times where it just didn't work. Like this time, I don't know why I ran into a problem, but uh, this is ultimately what you're going to end up with. You're going to end up going through all that and then updating it basically by hand if there's anything you didn't have working at that moment. So, oh, that's interesting. Let me change that really quick. Interesting. 
interesting. Is it outputting? Oh, well. It says it's complaining that my resolution is too high. Hopefully it's not too high or it's overblowing everything, but. Ah, all right. Okay, so we got the setting, uh, the operator station. That's the first thing that comes up normally. KI6NAZ, that's me. You put in your call sign, don't use mine. And add in things like your station locator, DM03. If you want to add details like what antenna you're running or what station QTH is at, you'd put that in there. And under rig control. So this is where you end up getting a little stumbly here. So we don't use, let's see. Since we're using FL rig and we got that set up, all we really need to do is click the checkbox that says enable FL rig control with FL rig as client. That makes things really easy for working on FL Digi. FL Digi works okay, but it has its own little quirks sometimes. So FL Rig makes it really easy. Cat Rig Control, let's just click through it. See, the checkbox is off. You don't want the checkbox on. All of these should have basically unchecked boxes. So again, Hamlib is off. Hardware PTT. We don't need hardware PTT, unless you do. But ideally, you're going to run off of FL Rig. All right. OK. Next thing, sound card. So this one can give you fits if you're new to, um, to Linux. It's not that much of a big deal in FL Digi, but it will be more of a question and a problem when we get into things like QSSTV and um, some of the others there. So we're going to go port audio. And you want to make sure you're using the USB audio codec. Again, I'm using a USB audio codec. That's what's embedded in my 7300. And it's good. FL Digi is smart enough to know that that is where we're at. So you're going to basically save. Boop, boop, boop. And then close. And then at that point, you have a operating system. You should see the frequency in the top. And it should mirror. So if we bring back FL Rig we should now have a mirroring situation where they should move together. And they are very good. So we got a question in the chat. Does somebody have a question? Uh, let's see. Question. Oh, and I should mention before uh, we get too far down the road, we will be doing the after chat on Discord. Uh, so make sure you guys check that out if you're interested in hopping into an after chat we can uh have a little talk about raspberry pi or whatever pie you happen to be eating so link is in the description for the after chat our discord if you'd like to do that i'm looking for that question i thought i saw somebody say question but i guess i missed it i'll come back to it later or maybe it just flew past the screen too fast <laughs> all right Weird. All right. Okay. Anyway, so you have this set up. Boop, boop, boop. Let's go up to where is it? Op mode. The most likely op mode that you're gonna run into, although man, we we had a lot of uh activity back in my day in, in amateur radio. There was a uh, large use of PSK, PSK31, right? But it's it's just not as as frequent or as as often seen as it used to be. So let's let's scroll down the band here a little bit. Let's get past this area. And the waterfall's real faint, but it's in there because it's trying to find a digital location. Let's see, is that anything? We might not have any activity, so no, it doesn't look like activity. But if you had it set up right, um, I'm not going to transmit because I, I don't want to. I'm not going to sit here. I'll sit on WSJTX for a second because I actually know there's people out there. But this one can be hit or miss. All right. So that's FL Digi. Hopefully, you that one's very straightforward. So, yep, confirm.
All right, next we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you WSJTX and I'll tell you what, I spent, um, I was having network problems yesterday. And to compound upon this, I was setting up a new image for the new script that KM4ACK has created. And I got into this horrible game of do I work WSJTX through FL Digi or uh, sorry, FL Rig, or do I run it through its own um, setup? Now, maybe it's just my Raspberry Pi or maybe it's just my 7300, but I was not really able to run FL Rig into WSJTX. So I'm going to close FL Rig and I'm going to show you the setup for WSJTX. Question, what do you do if you have a rig such as the G90, which FL Rig does not support? Can you use Omni Rig from Brett Glass? So the G90 is going to need the direct connect. You're going to have to connect directly to it. And I believe you use a Kenwood 2000 as the rig type for the G90. All right, under sound card, sound and video, WSJTX. Now, again, I have everything turned off right now, so it's going to jump right into what it thinks it knows. Yeah. Uh, so KM4ACK has the same problem. So I just I just avoid it. I was able to get the, the sound to work. I was able to get cat control to work. I couldn't get the transmit to function, though, which was very frustrating. So And it's nice to know you have the same problem. All right, so much like you've seen in a ton of my videos with WSJTX, you're going to input your call information, your grid location. I like to double-click on call sets for transmit enable and TX messages to RX receive window, um, RX frequency window, and then under radio. So this is the same. You guys, if you've seen this on Windows or Mac, you've seen this now. You're going to know it. It's very easy. You're going to select your rig. I use the ICOM 7300, so there you go. Again, TTY, uh, dev TTY USB, that is going to be your connection. If that is your connection, it is for me. And for my my baud rate, it's always 115200. And that is a setting that goes into the 7300. So you can't really get around uh, that unless you set it. So you got to know what it is, and that's exactly what I, I used. Uh, uh, Vinland Alchemist said, I might have missed, or Vineland, uh, making breakfast, or I might have missed it, making breakfast, but will this work for a homebrew radio? Um, no, this is a computer, basically. This is a computer that's interfacing with your um, radio. So you're basically going to use this to do digital modes. That's what its purpose is. All right. So 7300 talk here. Data bits is eight, stop bits is one, handshake none, cat control is checked. You want to be in data packet mode because this has a USB D mode, which is the data mode. And for splitter operation, you're going to use rig. Now, here's something a little bit quirky. You're going to hit test cat. And it is already set up, so it should be fine. But, oh, ha <laughs> ha, excellent. What's going on? Is it because it's already set up? Let's see. Yeah, it was already set up. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. There we go. Uh, let me go back to the screen. That's probably why it crashed. But what's going to happen is you're going to change this, and if you hit test cat, it's not going to turn green on you. You're going to think it turns green. It's not going to turn green. What's going to happen is the test PTT becomes clickable. So if you click that, you can test PTT. Um, you have to click test cat to illuminate the PTT button for you to click it. So if you're used to Windows like I am or Mac, and you don't see the green, it's not going to work. So, okay. So let's do a quick call. I'll do a quick CQ call. Let's bring up the um, waterfall real fast. And find a spot that looks good. I want it on 1400 exactly. This is the space that I'm transmitting on. And I'll go ahead and enable transmit and we'll walk through what's going on here. So I brought up the wide graph. Um, I right clicked on where I wanted it uh, on the little number band on top here. And then I fine tuned it down here for the transmit and receive frequency just using the arrow keys. You can use, um, you can type it in if you want. That makes it easy. And that is okay. Right, 
we are on the display. Good. Let's bring this back really quick. All right, so we're getting heard. We got one station so far. Let's wait a minute. I'm a little early to 40. And, of course, a fly found me as the stream came on. Uh, let's do a refresh real quick. Okay. So you're getting out, <laughs> or I'm getting out, which is good enough for me for right now. We're not working contacts. We're trying to get you guys on the air. All right, so that's how you do WSJTX. I'll wait a second to see if somebody's, like, replying to me, but um, hold on. All right. So far, so good. Making good time. Okay. All right, back to the desktop. We're going to go back to the Internet. Sorry, sound and video, and we're going to bring up JSA Call. Same thing, FL rig is off. We're not going to run FL rig. Um, so this is, today, because of the time of one hour show, you can really only focus on a couple of things at one time. We're mainly focused on the HF applications. I'm kind of an HF guy. That's kind of where my bread and butter is. But KM4ACK has some applications on running the VHF UHF side of some of the applications that run here. And you can. You can run this as a digipeter. You can run this as a packet node if you wanted to do VHF, uh, primarily VHF, but sometimes UHF packet. This will do that too. And it's the software is included. It will all be wrapped into it when you run it. So let's see, we've got that coming up. Let's give it a second here. Hey, Ham Radio Dude, thank you very much for the support. Okay, let's flip it over real quick. We're on JSA Call. It's showing you what showed on the radio. That is the 7.74. Uh, megahertz, we're not going to be operating in that space. That's for uh, WSJTX FT8. Same deal. Call sign. Put in your maidenhead grid square. Make sure you add at HRCC, which is our group that we have, and then go to radio. Same thing. 7300. We want cat on dev TTY USB 0 or whichever one you're connected, but if you only have one cable, it's likely that. Uh, data packet mode, rig mode, and then test, which is... It has illuminated the PTT button. If you PTT turns red, your PTT in the radio, you're good. That's that for cat control. That's how you get around the radio, how you change, get things set up. For audio, your input is going to be system default card codec for me. Let me show you how this can get a little wonky because there is a lot of options under that drop down. Adam Smythe or Andrew Sl uh, Slythe. Sorry. Andrew Scythe, Silith, Silith, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Under card system, system default card codec, that's what I use. And then I believe this one has even more. Yeah, there's even more options down on the transmit side. Again, system default. You may have to play around with it a bit. You'll know when you get it right because their waterfall will actually start receiving, receiving some stuff. All right, so we're on, it's working. You're receiving data. What are you going to do? We're going to right click and we're going to go to 40 meters because that's where we're operating on. It will change you to 7.078. And we want to check that we have the handshaking or the transmit worked out. So we're going to send a heartbeat, which I will click and we will wait. Oh, um, just from what I know about, we'll take a little tangent here. Just from what I know about running a Baofeng is a Digipeter. Some Baofengs have an extremely hard time using Vox as the way to key the radio on. 
it would not be my preferred way to create a run a digipeter anything that would be tripping the box on a baofeng would not be preferred all right look at all those people w8 nut i know that call w6 oem i think i got him too n5 rv i've definitely got him all right so that's working so let's go uh at oop, hey buddy come on now at hrcc hi all send it i'm still gonna send it That's really nice that Cam4 ACK is in the chat. I appreciate you coming out, buddy. Appreciate you in general for all the hard work you put in. All right. Can you have... Okay, so Patrick Dickey is asking, I guess I should clarify the question. Can you have both the Baofeng and HF radio connected to the Pi at the same time the Baofeng is running? Um, hold on one second. Conference unmuted. Okay. Can you have both the Baofeng and HF radio connected to the Pi at the same time? Uh, yes, because they'll be on different ports. I, I believe that's true. You're going to have different cables, so yes. They'll be on their own USB connection. Um. Wait. So that, that again? No, a different radio. So if you have, they would be sharing the same sound card. Oh, good point. You could put in a second sound card. So, for instance, the seventy three hundred has the internal sound card. Um, that you'd be using that into the Raspberry Pi. And if you had a split connection for a secondary sound card for your HT or your VHF radio, you could do that. I don't see a problem with that. You might run out of ports pretty quickly, though, because you're likely going to need... So the 7300 is only going to have one port, and you're going to have one port for the audio or your sound card for the second radio, and then whatever that needs. That may need a second cable for cat control as well. Um, and then you might need a GPS dongle because if you're running out in the field, which a lot of us do, you're going to want that hot GPS. So, right on. I don't know if people are replying to me or if they're just replying or they're having convos. Again, reminder, everybody, we're going to go to the Discord. And I think if I'm reading that correctly, that KM4ACK is already on our Discord. I think that's where his comments are coming from. So that's awesome. So he'll be there. We'll do Collins here shortly uh, because I have one more thing to show you. So far, my favorite thing that I've done with the Raspberry Pi because I haven't been able to get this work. I really focused on it and, and I knocked it out, but it took me a long time last night. So that's basically JSA Call. If you want to know how to run JSA Call, um, I have uh, videos on that and there's tons of videos out there too. So uh hrcc relay is coming in right on there it is auto relay hello those are i think they're done i'm looking for the little triangly thing here so looks like that's a completed transmission All right, so that is JS8 call. Now, I got a comment on my Instagram. This bug, I got it. Did I get it? I got. Oh. Sorry for clapping on the right in front of the camera, but this thing's like flying right in my face. I spent hours in front of this computer yesterday and hours getting ready for the stream tonight. No fly, and then as soon as I go live, there's the fly. Of course. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to get on them sstvs so q sstv let's pull that up um sstv is just good fun it is just good fun no matter how you you shake it uh i'm gonna get on that frequency real quick boop, 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 which should be 1.7.171 i believe that's true somebody can correct me in the chat I i'm pretty sure the sstv frequency is 7.171 
I'm losing it swatting at imaginary bugs. That's right. So this is what the app looks like when it comes up. So we're going to go to options, configuration. Uh, you're going to put in your info, uh, KI6NAZ, your locator, and you don't need to worry about directories, except for um, I did make a directory for radio memes for SSTV images. So you may need to do that too. I know I did. Um, let's see. What was the other thing too? Uh, templates. Oh, yes. I needed, I needed to bring this up. So home pi QSSTV templates is the directory. We're going to get a little... Um, so far, we haven't had to do any real Linuxing um, with this install. So again, great work to Jason in making this work without doing a lot of Linuxing. I like Linux. I like getting in the terminal, but a lot of people don't. So the problem is that when you get QSSTV, there's no templates loaded. So I had to make a template, and I just want to show you really quick where that's at. So I'm opening up the web browser that's in the Raspberry Pi. And where did that website go? Oh, it's gone. What the heck? So history. Um, recently closed. Yeah. Okay. So under users, Telnet, I'll post the link in the description for this. But we're basically going to ON4QZ QSSTV templates. If you Google that, it'll come up. And we're going to download this IM Relay template. Now, what you got to do, um, actually, we don't need to do a lot of Linux things, so this is good. Oh, somebody's transmitting. Hopefully, it's not profane. <laughs> Let's cover it up just to make sure it's not profane. So the next thing we need to do is go get that template, which it would be in the downloads directory. So click on the directory. We want to, um, where was it again? We need it here in the corner. Boop, 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 boop. I make sure I'm covering up this SSTV that could be profane. <laughs> it's not good though. It's not good quality. Um, all right, so where is it? It's under home, pi, QST templates. So we're in the home directory, which is this guy right here slash is root home pi qssstv so bring come on come on there we go and we want to go to templates i've already dragged mine in there but you bring up your download directory and just plop it in there at that point you can then go into your templates directory which you have here in the app the app will pull it in and you can change your template which i'll show you quickly how to do that the important thing, though, is sound. Um, this is the thing that's going to get you all honked up. Um, so I had to do a couple of things. The first, again, this is the 7300. I had to use the IEC 958 card codec dev USB audio codec USB audio for input. And I had to have the ALSA turned on. For output, I had to have it in hardware card codec dev zero usb audio codec usb audio that is what i had to do so you may have to do that i don't know um now under cat a little bit more straightforward don't do anything other than this it's this easy i know it's normally a little bit more difficult when you start if you've ever played around with trying to get a computer to connect for sstv you know it's kind of a pain this is very easy so you're going to go to enable hamlib cat interface. 373 is the hamlib ID for the 7300. Your radios will all have different IDs depending on which one you have. I was not able to get FL rig to work with this. It also just went it it worked, it keyed the radio but it wouldn't output anything. So I had to make some changes and do it the normal just hamlib straight away. No parity. Data bits is 8, stop bits 1. The data rate, again, is 115200. No SIV address. Don't put that in. And you type in dev TTY USB or whatever your USB port is that you're connected to it. Now, um, I'm not going to hit the restart because it's already working. I don't want to mess with it. But then you would hit restart cat interface. Okay. Now, that is pretty much all you have to do for setting it up. Then you get out of this. 
Let me show you. Go over to gallery now. This is actually using it. Okay, so these are some of the things that I have received today. Let's go to templates. So this is the template that you're going to get um, when you copy it over and start the application. So I just made a copy of it um, and then modified it. So this is what it's like when you, you double click on it. This is what a template is. So this is my call, the version of the software, DE, right, from, from, and then percent sign me, and then percent reply. That is a reply to a CQ call, okay? And these are, let's go ahead and close this so I can show you the editor. Edit, right click on it, say edit. And these are just objects you can go in and, and type to. Now this audio, is this adjustable? Oh God, there we go. Man, I was gonna be upset. I just did this really fast and I didn't even check to see if it was resizable. But uh, yeah, these are just text boxes. So you can go in here and change it. You can add more text boxes. And what's cool about these templates is that you can basically drop in a reply box of who you last saw an image from. It'll plop that in so that they know that you're replying to them, basically, which is pretty freaking cool. I think SSTV is awesome. We need to do more of it. Uh, this document has changed. Do you want to save your changes? Discard. Okay. So that, what you do with my template, dog? Anyway. All right. So I'm going to take one of my memes here. Let's pick a spicy meme. I clicked on gallery and TX SSTV. And let's see. Okay. The wife is really not helping me with the kids right now. I love my wife. Please stop the kids from crying. Uh, let's do wireless ground clamp because it's nice and uh, vibrant. So right click on it and hit 2TX. Okay. And then you go to the transmit tab. Give it time. It's going to space. And there it is. So it's going to say, or it should say CQ. Actually, let's, uh, no, let's do it right. Let's do it right. I'm going to go to templates. Get out of your bug. I thought I got you. And we're going to change this to CQ. Come on. Can't modify now? Unlock. Uh, okay. Great. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Let's delete this guy. Oh, yeah. I guess you can only... That's kind of weird. So what if we change the font? So the one thing I got to give you right up front is this is like a $40 computer, and it's going to get a little slow at some points. It's going to kerchunk on you. So take your time with it, okay? What kind of fun fontage do we have here? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of fonts. Holy smokes. Oh, I'm not going to mess with this. I thought we could just do this quickly. Never mind. Forget that. Uh, we want to save. Yes. Okay, good. So let's go to transmit. Uh, we want to change this to CQ. There we go. CQ KI6NAZ. So it's got my call sign, the version, my meme, and then me calling for a QSO. So at that point, uh, I'm going to change this to robot. Uh, no, I'm going to do SC2120. And I'm going to transmit. Here we go. This is the button. And where is my no output? Okay, so let me show you what I'm working with here. This is the thing that I ran into. So we're on my 7300. It's keyed the radio, but it's not outputting. There's a little bit of a carrier right here, but there's no power output. So let's see. What did I have to do? Uh, that's why. That's why. Stop that. 
USB, data. God. And stop it over here. Now let's try. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to turn the call-ins on here, hopefully. And bring you way up. There we go. So if anybody wants to call in with a question, you can call in now. Because we're running out of time a little bit. So it takes quite a long time to send a um, an SSTV image. So that's what we're literally watching the progress bar go up over the top here. All right, let's check the comments while we're while we're waiting. Jonathan Murray asks, what's a good starter SDR? I like the new Alec USB dongles. They take up less space on the USB slot than the RTL SDR does. Those things are a little too fat for me. I prefer the new Alec. Speedy Music Trinidad, what's up? Thanks for joining. Uh, Xavier says he needs to get his ham license, but it's a frustrating process in the Netherlands. I'm sorry about that, my dude. Uh, Don says, I prefer the RSP1A. I do too, but he says inexpensive. I guess it depends on your definition of inexpensive. The RSP1A is $100, and the new Alec is 25 to 30 so it's an arguably better deal. And we are wrapping up our transmission. There you go. Okay. So we'll wait to see if somebody replies to me. I don't know what that is, but I'm guessing it was profane. I like the, uh, that was, uh, I think that is a group of topless ladies. And I think that that very specific uh, pinkish interference area saved me from having to deal with it. Link in the, for the Discord is in the, uh, the description for this video. Samuel Sosa says, please make this video live. It will be. It auto posts. I'll cut out that beginning part where I was sorting out my, uh, my audio. <laughs> Sorry to echo Mike, everybody. Don't pay more. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to. Prolst. Right on. Cheers. Um, yes. Terry, G7WRS. Yes, I have done a video on um, getting the VNCA working. And there is a – I'll show you actually really quickly. Why not? If anybody wants to call, call in. No big deal if they don't. We The last couple of times, we haven't had anybody call in. I think you guys are over it. You guys aren't all about that call-in life anymore. Sudo, raspy config, burp, burp, burp. Yeah, give me that com dig config. Uh, so, okay, so you have to do this from Putty. So what you have to do to make this work? Oh, we got a caller. Um, hello? Hello, Josh. Uh, hey. This is Grant W4KK. How's it going? I have a quick question for you. It's going What's good. Um, is there any Linux images? So if I wanted to put it on, say, a MacBook, is there any... Is there anything like that out there? You want to like dual boot a Linux um, partition, basically? Yeah, like kind of like a, a Linux partition that has persistence, I would say. Ooh, I don't know. Um, can you run Buster? I mean, it would be kind of dumb to run Raspberry Pi Buster on a, a MacBook. 
I mean, you can just load Ubuntu and and just load all the software that way. Okay, oh. I was wondering if someone did. Oh, somebody's something already like got that. it in the chat. They said Skywave oh. Linux is a good pre-built ISO for hams. Okay. So Skywave Linux. Oh. I'm gonna write that down. Hell. I love it. You called in with a question. The chat answered it, and I'm also writing down the answer because that's great. That's a handy thing to have. All right. Hey, thanks for calling in. Uh, what was the name again? Sorry. Grant W4KK. Oh, got it. Grant. Okay, I, I had the call sign, but I didn't get the name. Okay, cool. Thanks sure. for calling in. Uh, All right. Thanks see. for answering my question, chat. Yeah. Thank you, chat. Skywave Linux. Right on. Cool. Thanks for that. That might save me some time later when I'm busting my head. Oh. I kicked it. Okay, so back to this really quick. You have to um, when you when you first image a, a SD card for Raspberry Pi, all you have to do it's really simple. You make a file, just a a text file. Right click, new file, and and type SSH, no file extension. That's all you have to do. Then plug that into the Raspberry Pi, plug an Ethernet cable into the Raspberry Pi, and start it up. Then you go into PuTTY, or whatever you use to SSH. You SSH in. The username is Pi. The password is Raspberry. And then you bring up sudo raspy config, which you're going to get greeted with this sign, or this uh, this thing. And what I do at that point is you can set the, uh, the network option. If you want to use Wi-Fi, you can set that. But what you want to do is go down to interfacing options, and you want to go to VNC, and you want to turn that on. Okay? That's the first step. This is actually a three-step process. I apologize. Well, I don't apologize. I didn't do this to you. Once you have VNC turned on, you go down to advanced options. And you need to change the resolution to 1080. Okay? 1920 by 1080. And then you restart. Okay? you Basically, when you go to finish like that, it will prompt you to reboot if you've turned the wi-fi on you can disconnect the ethernet cable and if you have turned vnc on you can then vnc to the ip address for the raspberry pi which is going to be the ip address at symbol pi or whatever your username is and then raspberry if you haven't changed the uh the password at that point what's going to happen though is it's going to come up with a much smaller resolution screen and that's because they've added an extra step with the Raspberry, Port, uh, Raspberry Pi 4 that you have to do. Under the Raspberry menu, you go down to Preferences, and you go down to Screen Configuration. And you're going to be greeted with this funky-looking screen right here. Let me drag it over. This is a real dumb screen. You right-click on HDMI 1, and you change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. You must do this, otherwise it will stay impacted. This is a GUI, a solution to a step that we used to go in and manually um, make the change in a configuration script. So this is actually funky looking screen, but it works. And then you hit the checkbox and it'll resize your VNC window perfectly. So that's, that's all there is to that. That's pretty easy. All right. Very good. Let's check on the chat one more time. I am uh, I'm still pretty cracked up by that image. Uh, Rizal Martinez, the links for all the Pi stuff that I recommend is in the description. So happy Pi Day. Check out my Amazon store. I am an Amazon affiliate, so this would a little bit of that money goes to me. No more expensive to you. But it is a list of all the products I recommend for the Raspberry Pi that I use, have recommended, and have used on videos. So the cases I recommend, the Raspberry Pi 4, which I really like, the battery bank that I use when I'm out in the field, um, all that stuff. So, yeah, go check that out. Somebody said, is the audio down? A little bit because I was monkeying around so, with it when we started, so I apologize for that. James Hannibal says he's being spotted on PSK Reporter. Good on you, buddy. Is there something special that needs to be done to get my position to show up on APRS website when transmitting? Oh, yeah, you know what? We we did jump around on that really quick. Let me go back to JSA call. We will leave the uh, the picture of what I assume is topless woman alone. Okay, let's go back to JSA call. I believe, if I remember correctly, this has the new accessory. Where is it? Didn't I see it in here? 
Yeah, the JS8 tools. All right, let's wait for JS8 call to come up. Ah, SSTV calling frequency is 7043. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, JSA call is up. Let's go to M0IAX JSA tools. And this is where you're going to get that APRS info. So, get grid. Uh, I don't have the GPS connected. You normally need GPS connected to make this work. But let's see if it'll... Yeah, no fix. I didn't think it would. Um... Could it be that easy? Let me just grab my GPS really quick and see if in the couple of minutes we have left. Let's see if this actually works. I don't, I didn't actually set up the GPS for this. I figured we'd start with just working it in the shack. If that green light starts flashing, then we got a GPS, GPS lock, which I don't know that we're going to do that. Oh, did we get somebody calling in? Uh, did I miss? Oh, I think I missed a call. Hello? Hey, how's it going? Hey, hi, uh, Mike here, Victor Echo. Conference muted. Oh, hold on. Let me get you. What was the call sign again? Victor Echo 2, Mike X-Ray Uniform, Mike. Echo 2, Victor Echo 2, Mike, what was it? Uh, Mike X-Ray Uniform. Great. Okay. Name is Mike. Oh, name is Mike. Okay. I was like, man, how many yeah, sorry How many that. characters you got in this call <laughs> sign? All right, go for it. No, no, just, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> uh, great stream so far, and hope you guys are staying safe down there. Um, just a couple quick questions. One, you mentioned earlier on uh, the uh, GPS dongle for field work, so does activations especially. Yes. Um, wondering if there's anyone in particular you'd recommend or if uh, just having, I know they even sell the RTC kind of hats for the Pi, if that'd be good enough. Uh, yeah, the, the RTC hats for the Pi, though, are kind of expensive. The dongle I just okay. plugged in, which is this guy right here, that's the GLONASS GPS dongle. What is it, like 10 bucks? It's really cheap. It's a... It's on Amazon. Again, the link is in the description for that if you're if you're interested. Cool. I don't think okay. I'm getting a Great. fix thanks. on GPS. Yeah. Okay, Mike. Yeah, thanks for calling in. Oh, thank you. Take care. Take it easy. All right. Oh, is there a ham radio dude? Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, I appreciate all of them, but $15 goes a long way in uh, in more Amazon parts <laughs> for radios. Hey, what's up? So somebody from Fieldcraft found me. Fish Cop. Love the Fieldcraft survival hat. Found your channel and theirs at the same time. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I hope you guys uh, listen to the podcast I did with Fieldcraft survival. That was a lot of fun. I don't think I'm... I'm, I'm guessing that inside we're not going to work GPS. Inside This new roof has radiant shielding, so I don't think I'm going to get it to work. But ideally... Um, I apologize for that. Ideally, you'd have the GPS connected. You'd start the tools. You'd get GPS from um, from. Sorry, you'd get grid from GPS, and then you can actually send out messages, and you can enable auto update every ten minutes, etc. For JSA call, which is really really nice, really handy, particularly when you're out in the field, R out in a field. Woody said, made my first CW contacts today. Fun stuff. Right on. All right. Yeah, what the heck? No. Nope. Well, I threw a Hail Mary, and it wasn't caught. And it's not a completed pass. That's okay, though. Yeah, I think they, uh, I think they shut down the GPS thanks to the uh, virus that shall not be named that we can't um, mention for our videos will become demonetized. All right, so uh, I think that'll do it. We're going to go over to, let's see. We're going to go over to Discord now. So if you'd like to follow us over there for the after chat, that would be awesome. Guys, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Please think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing because what I try to do is post a video once a week, a standard 
short form video, 10 minutes or so, and then do a live stream every Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time UTC. And it goes for about an hour. Um, this is taking longer. KN, uh, KN4ACK. I use this thing all the time out in the field, but this is taking longer than it normally does. I'll, I'll worry about it later. I think it actually is not getting through the uh, through the human malware. I like that. Uh, it's just not getting through the, the roof that I've gotten here. I've never used it inside. I only use it outside. I just set it up with the software and then connected it. Once I saw that it was zero, but it was working, I was like, okay, I'm good. And that was when I got it months ago. Um, yeah, okay, so last thing I had to do, this stream was the selection, this Pi Day stream topic was a selection by my wonderful patrons that support us, and so I want to give my big shout out to the producers here. The producers are the ones that every month they pick the first stream of the, of the month, the first week of the month. Last month didn't work because I was out in Prescott to talk to the Fieldcraft Survival folks. Um, so we postponed it to today, which happened to be Pi Day. So it was very, very apropos. So I appreciate that. That worked out beautifully. Anyway, big thank you. Again, go into Discord after this. Take the link in the description to set it up. Go into uh, big thanks going to Jason Brown, Jason Siebert, David Dancero, Danny Miller, Wesley Magyar, Barbara Schrock, Evan Hartman, Mark Fields, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale, Garrett Larson, 86DM Dennis, the Wyoming Ham, Randall Hinsley, Dennis Mickelson, Michael Hunt, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Sean Bales, KJ7ITX, Ur Jurgetchevich, Rob Zerges, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, Rob K8BCR, Lee Harrell, Michael Kearney, Stevie Barker, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadal, Stephen Hunt, Carnal Carroll, Michael Marusin, Michael Hearley, Harald Carpenter, and I did actually get through my one uh, mug of beer there. Thank you, Brew Crew. Stephen Hunter, Justin Rao, Stephen Carduz, Richard Smith, Hercules, KC1LZR, John Flowers, Steve Blandford, Andy Cowley, Tom Wright, Bill McCarty, Good Game Ham Radio, David Gerald, Michael Deards, Nicholas Dubay, Michael Iafredo, KD9, oof. I love that. Jason Jenkins, Jace Ravenfield, Masi Madi, Daniel Sullivan, Michael Hunt, Jason Legg, Jonathan Williams, Andy Cowley, Don Riley, Robert, Gr I think it's Grimace, Herb Brassington, James Tartamella, good, William Hustler, and Ryan McDonald. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right, I'm going over to the Discord. Hopefully you had fun with this. Um, I'll turn the stream back on. The way the Discord works for all that, that left, if there's still people watching, the way the Discord works is I just flip this around, and it's a Twitch-only stream because there's so many people talking and so many questions flying back and forth. It's really difficult to try and run that on YouTube to try and admin it. So we end this. Thank you for watching. If you want to follow me on Twitch, um, I think I have the link in the description, but if you search for Angry Shoverbot. You can find me there. I didn't have any admins on tonight. I don't know what happened to everybody. I didn't see anybody. So none of the links went out, but that's okay. They're in the description. You can find us that way. And yeah, we'll walk through some fun stuff. Anyway, I will talk to you guys, some of you soon. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later.